Welcome back to our ongoing video series, Don't Fear 5-Axis. Part of the fear some people have comes from what seems like too many options to choose from. What rotary do I choose? How big? And what machine do I pair that rotary with? Well, in this episode, we'll answer all those questions in plain English and get you on the path to making great 5-axis parts quickly. Let's get started. Of course, the best place to start is with your application. For this video, I've chosen this housing part as an example. Now, choosing a machine and rotary combination for a 3 plus 2 application is very much the same as choosing a machine for a 3-axis part. Part size dictates rotary size, rotary size dictates machine size. So, what size rotary do I need for this part? Not surprisingly, when choosing a rotary table, you need to make sure that the workpiece fits inside the diameter of the rotary platter. In this graphic, the blue area represents the maximum part size of the rotary. So, for my example here, my housing is one inch by two and a half by three inches. So I've chosen a TRT-100 because it'll support a maximum five inch diameter part. Perfect. Now, if you're working on smaller parts that can be held in a 5C collet, Haas Automation has a full line of HA5C rotary products that utilize a 5C collet system for clamping the part. Like this T5C, for example. The units can be fitted with pneumatic collet closers and have a threaded nose to accept a five inch manual chuck. For larger workpieces, we make a variety of rotary tables with platters that range in size from 160 millimeters all the way up to 600 millimeter diameter. If you primarily work on round workpieces, consider an HRT A5 or A6 rotary product. These come standard with an A15 or A16 spindle nose, so chucks and collet chucks can be fitted directly on the spindle nose without an adapter. Our two axis rotary tables are divided into two categories, the TRT and the TR. TRT stands for tilt rotary table and TR stands for trunnion rotary. The basic difference is that on the trunnion, the tilt axis is supported on both ends, while on the TRT it's not. This design difference allows a much larger part swing diameter on the trunnion style rotary tables. Now, let me give you a few words of advice about machining parts larger than the rotary platter. It's very important that the workpiece be properly supported on a rigid fixture, especially when machining outside of that platter diameter. As you apply cutting forces further away from the center of the rotary, the possibility of overcoming the rotary brake torque increases. Visit DIY.HaasCNC.com for more information on how to calculate rotary brake torque and contact your cutting tool manufacturer for more information on how to calculate cutting forces in your application. Okay, I've got my TRT-100, but what machine do I choose? It's worth mentioning that at HaasCNC.com, we have a handy tool called the Rotary Fit Chart. Just select your machine or rotary from the drop-down menu, and the configurator will give you a list of compatible rotaries and machines that are a perfect fit. It'll even tell you if a rotary will fit in the machine, but you may not be able to use that center T-slot. You might have to get some alternate fixturing. If a rotary doesn't appear on the list, that means it doesn't fit in that machine at all. The configurator tells me that the TRT-100 fits in a DT-2, and that's the perfect milling machine for my application. What other options does Haas offer for 5-axis machining? Well, we build a line of dedicated 5-axis models, the UMC series. We also build five five-axis models where the two-axis rotary table can be removed, returning the machine to a three-axis configuration with the standard mill table. This is the VFTR series. These models are packaged with options necessary for five-axis like high-speed machining, dynamic work offsets, and tool center point control. We also build a horizontal five-axis configuration, the EC1600 ZT5AX. We pre-configure these models, but you can build your own. Any Haas mill can be configured as a five-axis machine. Installing rotary products on Haas machines is easy. We'll cover that procedure and spotlight some rotary setup features in the control in another video in this series. As I said before, we need to consider the size of the rotary when choosing a machine. Now, the rotary may fit on the machine table, but how tall is it? 
it may take away valuable Z-axis clearance. Haas Automation offers a few extended clearance options to deal with this problem. On VF3 and VF4 size machines, we offer a low profile table option that adds three inches of clearance. And on VF6 through VF11 size machines, we offer a column riser option that adds eight inches of clearance. Now, none of these options add Z-axis travel. They just increase the table to spindle nose at the bottom of Z-axis travel. They work great when the rotary product's installed, especially if you have a tall fixture or long tool holders. But when you remove that rotary from the machine, you're left with a pretty large spindle nose to table distance. So remember, work holding like vices may need subplates or risers underneath them. Other considerations include how much floor space the mill will occupy and how much usable mill table space I need when the rotary is installed. A VF6 is a big machine. If I install a TR310 on that machine, I get a large five axis work envelope, but I have virtually no usable mill table space. On the other hand, if I install a TR200Y, I get my five axis and lots of table space. That's because that unit is designed to be installed with the tilt axis parallel to the Y axis. Again, it all comes down to what's more important, usable work envelope on the rotary or usable mill table space on the machine. Also, keep in mind that a larger rotary requires a larger lifting capacity to get that rotary on and off the machine. Don't always assume that bigger is better. So what's the best all around option for making both large and small parts? Here are my recommendations for five axis configurations based on work envelope. In the small part category, the TRT100 is the rotary of choice. It provides a five inch work envelope. I like this rotary installed on the DT2 machine because I get plenty of mill table space left over for a mill vise. Also, I take advantage of the high speed features in both the mill and the rotary. For work envelopes up to eight inches, the most versatile option is the TR200Y. I like this installed in a VF4 size machine because there's room for multiple vices on the table when this unit is installed with the tilt axis parallel to Y. Both of these configurations give you the flexibility to do three axis work and five axis work in the same machine without having to remove and replace the rotary unit during changeovers. For maximum versatility on a wide range of workpiece sizes, the UMC series is the best choice. These models come with a 500 millimeter diameter platter, which is plenty of room for two standard six inch mill vices when doing three axis work. If your machine workpiece is larger than eight inches, the UMC is the model for you. So what options can I get that'll improve my five axis setup? I talked earlier about building your own five axis machine. Well, the following options will turn any three axis Haas mill into a five axis. Obviously, you'll need a two axis rotary table that fits inside the machine. Then the mill needs to be configured with the fourth and fifth axis drive options to power the motors on the rotary. Personally, I would not buy a machine for five axis without the following options. They make life so much easier during setup and operation. The dynamic work offset and tool center point control option allows part location in the machine to vary from model location in the cam system. The control stores the machine rotary zero point and uses that information along with the work offsets to machine the parts in the correct location. This option makes setting up five axis jobs as simple as setting up three axis jobs, dramatically reducing setup time. The wireless intuitive probing system is also highly recommended, so much so that we made it a standard feature on our UMC series. You really need the probing system to accurately locate the machine rotary zero points. It also makes setting tool length and work offsets quick, easy, and very accurate. The probing system comes with visual programming templates to simplify functions like calibration and programming. The system also comes with a full suite of probing cycles for things like part inspection. The high speed machining option is required for simultaneous five axis tool paths. It's also necessary for machining 3D surfaces. Essentially, it analyzes the feed rate, the length of block, and the change in direction from block to block to determine how much, if at all, the machine needs to alter the feed rate to stay on the programmed path. 
Imagine you're driving on a windy road for the first time. You don't know exactly where to speed up and slow down to make it through that section the fastest. But after a few passes, you know exactly where to brake and accelerate. And that's what high-speed machining does for your full 5-axis and 3D toolpaths. So, I've given you several things to consider when selecting a machine and rotary combination for multi-axis machining. What size rotary do I choose? Well, part size dictates rotary size. What machine do I choose? Consult the rotary fit chart. What other options does Haas Automation offer? Well, consider one of our dedicated 5-axis or a 5-axis model with a removable rotary table and extended clearance options. What's the best overall option for machining large and small work pieces? Review my recommendation and consider your need for available table space. And finally, what other options does Haas have for 5-axis? Well, select the options that simplify setup. They pay for themselves very, very quickly. Well, that's it for now. Be sure to join me next time on Don't Fear 5 Axis.